नमस्कार दोस्तों आज की वीडियो में हम दसवीं क्लास का इकोनॉमिक्स का असाइनमेंट सॉल्व करेंगे वीडियो को शुरू करने से पहले अगर आपने अभी तक इस चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है तो सब्सक्राइब कर ले और नोटिफिकेशन ऑन कर ले ताकि आगे की वीडियो का नोटिफिकेशन आपको मिल जाए यह असाइनमेंट बीस नंबर का होगा इसके अंदर सभी प्रश्न करने हैं सभी के अंक प्रश्नों के सामने दिए गए हैं तो चलते हैं प्रश्न की ओर क्वेश्चन वन Answer any one of the following questions in about 40 to 60 words. B. The development of the economy plays a pivotal role to creates needs and satisfying human wants. Explain. Answer all human wants to have some basic common characteristics. Let us have a look at the similar nature of human wants. Wants are unlimited. A human is never truly satisfied, and so his wants to are endless. We may temporarily satisfy some of our wants. But they always reoccur. Different wants have varying degrees of intensity. Some wants are extremely urgent, some are less intense. Competitive. We have limited means, and so we cannot satisfy all of our wants. So they compete with each other. And the most urgent one will be satisfied. Question 2. Answer any one of the following questions in about 40 to 60 words. B. Distinguish between labor intensive techniques and capital intensive techniques of production. Which one of them is suitable for our economy and why? Answer Capital intensive production requires more equipment and machinery to produce goods, therefore, require a larger financial investment. Labor intensive refers to production that requires a higher labor input to carry out production activities in comparison to the amount of capital required. Labor intensive technology of production refers to the technique in which more labor per unit of output is used. On the other hand, Capital intensive technology uses more capital per unit of output. Question 3. Answer any one of the following questions in about 40 to 60 words. B. The role of producers in a perfectly competitive market and a monopoly market is reversed while determining the price of a commodity. Explain the reason. Answer perfectly competitive market. Equilibrium price is determined by the forces of market demand and market supply. Market demand refers to the sum total of demand for a commodity by all the buyers in the market, whereas market supply refers to the sum total of supply of a commodity by all the firms in the market. Question 4. Answer any one of the following questions in about 100 to 150 words. B. You are suggested to make a visit to the insurance company branch office in your locality. Meet to insurance executive officer of the branch and discuss about the process of taking insurance policy. Prepare a brief report on the basis of discussion. Answer the procedure for obtaining an insurance policy is the process of applying and obtaining coverage from an insurance company. It typically involves researching and comparing different insurance policies, contacting the insurance company, providing personal and financial information, going through the underwriting process, paying the premium, and receiving the policy document. Explanation The procedure for obtaining an insurance policy typically involves the following steps. A research and compare different insurance policies. Research and compare different insurance policies offered by various insurance companies to find the one that best suits your needs. Contact the insurance company. Contact the insurance company either by phone, email, or visiting a branch office to request an insurance policy. It provide personal and financial information. Provide the insurance company with personal and financial information, such as your name, address, age, occupation, income, and other details. A. Underwriting. The insurance company will evaluate your application and assess the risk associated with providing you coverage. A. Premium payment. Once your application has been approved, you will be required to pay the premium, either in one lump sum or in installments. A. Receive the policy. Once the premium has been paid, you will receive the policy document, which outlines the terms and conditions of the coverage provided. It's important to note that the procedure may vary depending on the insurance company and the type of insurance policy. It's always a good idea to ask the insurance executive officer of the branch for more information and clarify any doubts. Question 5. Answer any one of the following questions in about 100 to 150 words. A. Compare the features of the perfect competitive market and a monopoly market. Answer. 1. Features of perfectly competitive market. A large number of buyers and sellers, there exist a large number of buyers and sellers in a perfectly competitive market. The number of sellers is so large that no individual firm owns the control over the market price of a commodity. 
Due to the large number of sellers in the market, there exists a perfect and free competition. A firm acts as a price taker while the price is determined by the invisible hands of market, i.e. by demand for and supply of goods. Thus, we can conclude that under perfectly competitive market, an individual firm is a price taker and not a price maker. 2. Homogeneous Products All the firms in a perfectly competitive market produce homogeneous products. This implies that the output of each firm is perfect substitute to others' output in terms of quantity, quality, color, size, features, etc. This indicates that the buyers are indifferent to the output of different firms. Due to the homogeneous nature of products, existence of uniform price is guaranteed. 3. Free exit and entry of firms. In the long run, there is free entry and exit of firms. However, in the short run, some fixed factors obstruct the free entry and exit of firms. This ensures that all the firms in the long run earn normal profit or zero economic profit that measures the opportunity cost of the firms either to continue production or to shut down. If there are abnormal profits, new firms will enter the market, and if there are abnormal losses, a few existing firms will exit the market. 4. Perfect knowledge among buyers and sellers. Both buyers and sellers are fully aware of the market conditions, such as price of a product at different places. The sellers are also aware of the prices at which the buyers are willing to buy the product. The implication of this feature is that if any individual firm is charging higher or lower price for a homogeneous product, the buyers will shift their purchase to other firms or shift their purchase from the firm to other firms selling at lower price. 5. No transport costs. This feature means that all the firms have equal access to the market. The goods are produced and sold locally. Therefore, there is no cost of transporting the product from one part of the market to other. Features of a monopoly market. 1. Single seller of the product. In a monopoly market, usually, there is a single firm which produces and or supplies a particular product slash commodity. It is fair to say that such a firm constitutes the entire industry. Also, there is no distinction between the firm and the industry. 2. Entry Restrictions Another feature of a monopoly market is restrictions of entry. These restrictions can be of any form like economical, legal, institutional, artificial, etc. 3. No closed substitutes. Usually, a monopolist sells a product which does not have any closed substitutes. Therefore, the cross-elasticity of demand for such a product is either zero or very small. Also, the price elasticity of demand for the monopolist product is less than one. Hence, in the monopoly market, the monopolist faces a downward-sloping demand curve. 4. Price maker. Since there is only one firm selling the product, it becomes the price maker for the whole industry. The consumers have to accept the price set by the firm as there are no other sellers or close substitutes. Question 6. Prepare any one project out of the given below. B. Prepare a project on the opening of a savings bank account in a post office situated in your nearby locality under following headings. Paste a picture of the post office. Guidelines provided by the employee. Documents required for opening a saving account. Copy of documents. Benefits after opening an account. Answer. Opening a savings bank account in a post office. 1. Paste a picture of the post office. Two guidelines provided by the employee. When you visit the post office to open a savings bank account, an employee will guide you through the process step by step. They will explain the necessary forms to be filled out, provide information on required documents, and assist with any related queries. Three. Documents required for opening a savings account. To open a savings account at a post office, you will generally need the following documents. 1. Proof of identity, e.g., Adhar card, PAN card, passport. 2. Proof of address, e.g., Adhar card, utility bill, rent agreement. 3. Passport sized photographs. 4. Copy of documents. Five, benefits after opening an account. Once you open a savings account at a post office, you can enjoy several benefits such as safe and secure storage of your money. It earn interest on your savings. 
and access to various banking services, e.g., withdrawals, deposits, fund transfers, convenient banking facilities in your nearby locality. अगर आपको ये वीडियो अच्छी लगी हो तो वीडियो को लाइक कर दे और चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर दे और अगर आपको असाइनमेंट की पी चाहिए या हाथ से लिखे असाइनमेंट चाहिए तो डिस्क्रिप्शन में हमारे वहाथ्स एप नंबर पे संपर्क करें धन्यवाद